the third area that I want to touch on is artificial intelligence. And I know that is a hypercharged term. Um, it is defined as computing systems that are capable of human-like intelligent behavior. Um, but artificial intelligence is associated, you know, today with a lot of the great science fiction. However, AI is around us everywhere. It is becoming very commonplace. So you have common usages like talk to text or photo tagging or fraud detection. And then there's the cutting edge opportunities that we talk about with AI, things like precision medicine, autonomous vehicles, uh, injury prediction. Artificial intelligence is transforming the way businesses operate and the way people engage with the world. And as Andrew Ng, the chief data scientist of Baidu noted, just as the Industrial Revolution relieved humanity of much of the physical drudgery, artificial intelligence promises to relieve us of much of the mental drudgery. So machine learning and its subset techniques, which is d deep learning, these are key methods for expanding the field of artificial intelligence. While only 7% of all servers deployed worldwide last year were deployed in support of a machine learning solution, the capabilities and the insights it enables makes machine learning the fastest growing of all forms of artificial intelligence, and it makes analytics as a whole the fastest growing workload in the data center faster than any other workload. By 2020, there will be more servers running data analytics than any other workload. And it may come as a surprise to some of you, uh, we'll see, but we clearly hold a leadership position today. So Intel processors power 97% of all of those servers deployed for machine learning workloads. That includes deep learning. The new Intel Xeon E5 processor is the most widely deployed processor for machine learning and deep learning. And our second generation of Xeon Phi, which is Knight's Landing, we just launched that at the International Supercomputer here in, in June. It delivers the scalable performance that's optimal for deep learning training. So there's tremendous, tremendous benefit in running machine learning and deep learning workloads on Intel architecture, one of them being the very obvious common and consistent programming model. So you want to develop your environment for training, you want your development environment for the training portion of the workload to be the same environment that you have for your scoring workload. That environment should be the same. And once you've trained an algorithm, you don't want to recode and re-optimize it. So the new Xeon Phi is, it's both a bootable processor, it's the host processor, and it's also the coprocessor, all in one. So your machine learning solutions are running on the host CPU or running as an onload. This means you don't have to deal with all the complexity and constraints that come with an offload accelerator solution. M machine learning and deep learning training, by definition, is a distributed, parallel, high-performance workload. The math for machine learning and deep learning is not new, it's not complex, it's simple linear algebra, but what is new is the enormous, enormous scale. The more data that you can compute, the more accurate your model, and the more compute you can throw at the problem, the faster the model will train and converge. So 120, a Xeon Phi cluster reduces the training time of your model by over 50x. Xeon and Xeon Phi are inherently scalable architectures. At Intel, we believe that all great architectures are extensible. And the world of AI is a very dynamic and exciting place right now to be developing on these solutions. Uh, we have many developers here today that are contributing to the field of artificial intelligence, creating new ways to apply machine learning and, and deep learning algorithms, and to capitalize on what is a very expansive opportunity in the field of artificial intelligence. And I'm thrilled to have one of these very impressive companies with me here today. Indico is an analytics company that focuses on deep learning. And here to tell you more about what they're doing is their CEO and founder, Slater Viktorov. Slater. Hey. Hey, Slater, how are you? Oh, I'm doing Good wonderfully, Good to see you, Diane. and I love those shoes. Can well, everybody see the shoes? Well, thank you, they shoes? came at special request. <laughs> I'm wearing probably the most beat-up pair of flip-flops that have ever been on this stage. <laughs> that is true. Okay, so, just... <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I kind of like my. <laughs> No, it's okay. You can keep yeah, them I mean, on. It's okay. Wonderful. You can stay. You can stay. All right. So, oh, um, yeah. I'll, I'll make it quick. Oh, I don't <laughs> no, want to get no. this dirty. So just start. Just start by telling the audience a little bit about Intico. What you actually do. Absolutely. So Intico, we're we're a text and image analytics company, and we focus specifically on making it easier for developers to apply these deep learning techniques to text and image problems. Now, there's a lot of issues that we've recognized fundamentally in the space, from the expertise required to use a lot of these deep learning solutions to the difficulty in getting up and running with a lot of the popular frameworks. But there's two areas that we've really started to focus on that we see as the key issues. And these focus around the data constraints for yep. training these new models, yep. as well as the fundamental uh, deployment infrastructure. Those are, those are two big challenges. So why don't you give us a little insight into the technical approach that you're bringing to these two big challenges. Yep. So we, we focus on a particular area of deep learning that's known as transfer learning. Okay. And transfer learning talks about the art and science of basically applying old learning to new problems. So this means you train a very, very generalized model, and then you fine tune it for the problem at hand. And what this means is that allows you to fundamentally change the way that you approach the problem. It means that instead of requiring tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of labeled examples, you can actually hit the same accuracy with hundreds or even dozens of examples. That's amazing. Now, the really exciting thing about that is that allows us to fundamentally change the way we think about machine learning. Rather than the single monolithic models that are supposed to optimize globally, it allows you to actually treat each of your customers as an individual. It allows you to treat each single piece as its own separate model. So you can move from, say, a single model to having thousands of wow, models. That's exciting. And the, the issue with that is once you move to thousands of models, GPUs really don't make that much sense anymore. So I certainly like the idea of GPUs not making sense, but maybe you should, <laughs> but you probably should give us a little more insight into why you make that statement and CPUs versus GPUs. Oh, well, absolutely. So with a, with a single monolithic model, you still have to deal with this extra I.O. of dealing with the CPU and the GPU and figuring out those communication those pathways. Hops. Yeah, it's, it's extra hops that really sort of get injected into your model. And with a single model, it's not necessarily a huge issue. But the further you scale this out, the more models you have, the more frequently you want to train those models, the bigger of a problem that becomes. So these GPU architectures actually scale very, very poorly once you start expanding this out. Got it. Right. And then the, the second piece here, other than just the pure I.O., is the sheer memory footprint. Mm -hmm. So uh, a deep learning model is going to take you one to two gigabytes of runtime memory. And a GPU card, you've only got about four gigabytes to work with. And now it's very easy to do the math there. If you're very, very lucky, you might fit five models on a machine. And it's not tractable to say if you've got 500,000 customers, you should deploy 100,000 GPUs. Now, if you move that onto CPU, if you use this deep learning approach, then not only do you have much more memory to work with, but each of these models become much, much smaller. And then by moving over to the new Xeon Phi line of chips, rather than the GPU architecture, you actually get around these problems. Well, this is so exciting. I really, really appreciate what you're doing, um, the working with Intel, and I really wish Indigo great success. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. <clears throat> so machine learning is a prime workload for high-performance computing. And NERSC, uh, the National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center, it's part of the U.S. government's Department of Energy, uh, NERSC is the quintessential HPC shop. And NERSC has made a very big commitment to Xeon and Xeon Phi with their Cori supercomputer. So they are now investing to expand the use of machine learning to what are traditional data-intensive science problems. So we're super happy to announce that we are partnering with them to advance the frontier of machine learning at scale. We will be tackling previously unsolvable problems that require the entire Cori supercomputer challenges such as creating a catalog of all objects in the universe. Machine learning is clearly opening up a new approach to scientific discovery. And so when you think about it, we're going from government high-performance computing machine learning, and then I'd like to take you now into the commercial deployments of HPC. I'm very happy to have with us today um, Baidu, obviously also one of the Super 7 cloud service providers and a global leader in deep learning and artificial intelligence. Baidu has adopted Xeon Phi to run their machine learning workloads, and I'm happy to have here on stage with us Mr. Jing Wong. He is Senior Vice President and Chairman of Baidu's Technical Strategy Committee, and he's going to tell us about their AI vision uh, and their vision with, with Xeon Phi. Hi, Mr. Wong. Hi, ben. good to see you. Thank good you for you. coming. I'm so glad you're here. 
I, I'm very excited to share with you uh, our uh, AI vision. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, the next era of computing mm -hmm. is uh, the era of artificial intelligence. Uh, modern AI is driven by two important trends. The number one is the increasing availability of large data sets. Yeah. And the number two is the growth uh, of the computational capacity. Uh, that these two trends coming together that powers the AI for the next uh, era to, to come. Yeah, the new AI capability enables uh, new applications that will uh, cross many industries and change people's lives. Yeah. And Baidu is very excited. Um, at Baidu, we focus on a technology called Baidu Brand, uh, which is uh, spanned over many AI areas, including uh, image processing, yep. natural language processing, yep. uh, speech recognition, and more. Yeah. Yeah. Consumers see this uh, technology through uh, some of our products, like uh, uh, Baidu Doer. Mm -hmm. uh, Doer is a uh, uh, by the personal assistant, uh -huh. and also a deep speech. Yep. Of course, yep. uh, AI plays a critical role for autonomous driving initiative of Baidu. Yeah, you are making big advancements in autonomous driving in China. It's very impressive. But on the um, comment you made about deep speech, can you tell us a little bit about what, how this is helping you in AI and what you're doing with deep speech? Uh, deep speech is a deep learning system for speech recognition. Mm -hmm. Uh, it relies on an artificial neural network that learns what is relevant in the audio and how to transcribe it directly. Uh, we trained it on, on tens of thousands of hours of speech. Wow. Yeah. So it is able to handle many uh, different kinds of accents and noise conditions. Yeah, that's a pretty remarkable data set. So I know Intel has been closely partnering with, with Baidu to help drive your artificial intelligence innovation. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what drove you to select Intel technology for AI? Yes, we are always trying to find ways to train neural networks uh, faster. A big part of our approach is our use of techniques normally reserved for high-performance computing, yeah. HPC, yeah. as you mentioned many times. Yeah. That has helped us achieve a 7x speed up over our previous system. Wow. So experiments on that used to take us like weeks, wow. now just in days. Wow. When it comes to AI, Intel Xeon 5 processors are a great fit uh, in terms of running our machine learning networks. Uh, the increased memory size Xeon 5 provides make it easier for us to train our models efficiently compared to uh, other solutions. In testing with Xeon 5, we found that very promising and consistent performance across a wide range of uh, kernel shapes and size uh, relevant to the state of art uh, long short term uh, memory models. So we are enthusiastic about uh, continuing the work with Thank Intel. You. Thank you, we, we greatly appreciate the partnership. Now you did mention HPC, obviously, and I, I know that Baidu has a new exciting offering that uh, you're offering as a service, so can you talk about your HPC strategy? Uh, yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, so we all know the powerful impact HPC can have on solving biggest uh, challenge faster with greater efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, which covers from AI to many other highly computational uh, workloads. Uh, the challenge is that a lot of developers out there, yeah. uh, they don't have a lot of affordable options. Uh, so with Intel, uh, we are exciting uh, that uh, seeking the opportunity to create Xeon 5-based public cloud HPC solutions. Uh, we believe that could help bring HPC to much broader yeah. audience. Yeah. Uh, making HPC available in the Baidu cloud means more developers can participate. And also, uh, Baidu cloud can work faster and more efficiently this is enormously powerful. Yes, it's, it's uh, it breaks down barriers uh, to new thinking and new ideas. We think that will mean not only lower cost, but also greater velocity of HPC and uh, AI innovation. Yeah, we have been talking about the democratization of HPC, making it re readily and easily available, and you are right down that path with your HPC as a service. So it's, it's very impressive. You guys have certainly done a great job in enabling a broad range of technologies, um, and the deep learning work you're doing is wonderful, and we appreciate that you're doing it on Intel Xeon Phi. Thank you for being a leader in your industry and for joining me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong.
So we are also investing to create a rich environment for all of the developers of artificial intelligence solutions. Uh, first, Intel has a long history and a long commitment to open source. So we're optimizing the data analytics platforms, contributing the enhancements upstream, so those optimizations are available. These are optimizations like improved security uh, or optimizations around large memory footprints. Uh, and we are still early, as I hope you would agree, in the days of artificial intelligence, and therefore new frameworks are continually emerging. Uh, we are absolutely committed and in investing to make sure that all of those frameworks as they emerge uh, run outstanding on a single Xeon or a single Xeon Phi node, but then also we want to ensure that they run at scale. Uh, third is uh, we to get you the very best performance and to make it easy to access and download, we're packaging up our math kernel libraries into those frameworks. Uh, we also have a series of deep learning tools, a toolkit, the, the deep learning SDK, software developer kit, for both training, model training, and for deployment. And finally, we invest in the academic community, an investment that uh, is in those that will deliver that next big wave of innovation in the area of artificial intelligence. So large investments in building out an ecosystem that runs well on Intel architecture. So you've heard from Intego, you've heard about NERSC, you've heard from Baidu, all of them talking about the value of Xeon Phi for machine learning. Today, I'm very happy to disclose to you the next generation of Xeon Phi. Its code name is Knight's Mill. It will be available to you next year. Uh, Knight's Mill is also a bootable host CPU, so it maintains that onload model. Um, but what we've done is we've included new instructions into the Intel instruction set. Those instructions are enhancements for variable precision floating point. So the result is you will get even higher performance and even higher efficiency for, for deep learning models uh, and training of those models of complex neural data sets. So we commit to you to a very long roadmap of optimized solutions for artificial intelligence. And finally, I am excited to announce that last week we signed the definitive agreement to acquire Nirvana Systems. Now Nirvana is a recognized leader in deep learning their IP as well as their deep expertise in accelerating deep learning algorithms will directly apply to our advancements in artificial intelligence. They have solutions at the silicon level, at the libraries, and at the framework level. So bringing together the Intel engineers that create Intel Xeon and Xeon Phi um, with the talented Nirvana systems engineers and their deep learning engine, we can accelerate solutions to you, the developer community, and we plan to continue to make these kinds of investments in leading edge technologies that complement and enhance our artificial intelligence portfolio. And so it is an exciting time to be in the tech industry. From the opportunities unleashed by cloud computing, to the transformation of the network and the move to 5G, to the emergence of artificial intelligence and the opportunity to change the way people engage with the world. The data center is truly the center of possibility, and we look forward to making the future with you. Thank you.